I'm Julie Fay Fan Balzer, and it's time to add a breath of fresh air to our art. So we're going to begin with this stenciled tray, and you can see it's a really pretty addition to your outdoor deck or to your indoor life too. So it all starts with papers that we're making for collage. So I am going to print my papers with a gelatin plate, but you could also do any kind of stenciling, stamping, painting that you want. Basically, the way that a gelatin plate works is it's kind of just a quick way to get some color on there. So I'm going to take Take some paint and just put it directly onto the plate like so. And then I'm going to roll through it with my brayer. Now you always want to make sure to roll in two different directions. That's very important so that you make sure that you get full coverage on the plate. Then I love to use stencils. It just makes so much pattern happen really quickly. So I'm going to place the stencil down. So basically I'm getting these roses. It's a big stencil. So like if I wanted to get the vine, I would just place it on the other side. I'm also using one of my favorite papers in the world for collage. This is deli paper. It is what you would use to wrap a sandwich, but it is really thin so that when you collage it, it does beautiful things. So I'm just rubbing with my hand. And the other thing I like is it's translucent. So you can see through and you can see like when you need to rub a little extra in the small areas of the stencil to make sure that the paint has transferred all the way through. And you can see the result is a beautiful print. I can usually eke out a second print or a ghost print if I really rub in there a lot. But the super fun thing that happens really is when you start layering. So this is just a basic. I can actually now take this stencil off and looky what I have underneath, right? I have actually almost like a stamp of the stencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up on here. And this is obviously a piece of deli paper that I already had some printing on. But that is where it starts to get really interesting, is when you're just adding color to color. So, and in fact, to clean off my brayer, I take a spare piece of deli paper and just roll out that brayer so that I have actually a piece of collage paper when I'm done. So I'm gonna just keep going. And you can mix colors too directly, even some of them that might be a little bit of a weird combo. Like we're gonna go with blue and orange. And yes, that's gonna make brown. And that is totally fine because this is a unique color of brown that you're not gonna find in a tube of paint. So let's make that brown as they mix together. It might even look like it's making kind of a greeny brown, a cool color. Sometimes you need those dirty colors to set everything else off really well. So there's our brown color. And let's use some dots. I'm a huge fan of dots. So we're gonna put down our dots, same piece. We're just gonna go ahead and push it down and pick up that grid. Now you don't have to pick up a perfect print. In fact, let's purposely not do it perfectly. And you can see that I missed some places here because it doesn't have to be perfect. And we can go back. And again, I don't want that grid to necessarily be perfect, so I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> Isn't it nice to not do a good job purposefully? And I just keep going and going, picking up all that color. And again, I can pick up the grid from here too. So eventually you will have a big, pile of painted papers that are ready to use and you're ready to move on. So what I have here is a teeny tiny tray. It's just a smaller version of the big tray that I showed you. And what I wanna do is basically paint just the edges. And I have one here that's already done. Because we're gonna be putting our collage papers in the center, we don't need to paint the rest of it. So I'm gonna take my papers that are dry and not thinking too much about it, I'm just gonna cut some pieces, big or small, apply some adhesive on here. I'm using gel medium, but you could use whatever you want. And you can use a credit card or a hotel room key to apply that adhesive. And the nice thing about using that instead of a brush is that when you do that, you're able to just sort of go on top and make sure there are no air bubbles or anything like that and really smooth it down. Now, if there's anywhere that didn't get some adhesive, you can just go ahead under and make sure that you just tuck some adhesive in there. It's a very forgiving process. And you're just gonna build up over and over until what you have is a painted tray with a completely covered bottom. 
but we don't want people to be able to tell that it's collage, right? We wanna trick the eye. So I have this stencil that has all these little shapes and onto my palette paper, I'm gonna go ahead and put out some paint so that I can stencil. Now I always like to add a little bit of white to my paint when I'm doing layering because I think it creates a lot of opacity. So I'm using a cosmetic sponge and I dab into the paint. I don't want too much, dab off into the white to mix it. And again, I dab off. I'm using my palette paper to do all that. Then I take the stencil, place it down, and anywhere that there are seam lines, it doesn't have to be everywhere, but what you wanna do is basically pounce up and down pounce up and down. You can hold the stencil in place with your hand. It's okay if it bends in that tray. It's not a big deal. And you're gonna go ahead and grab some paint to sort of hide or mask that seam a little bit. And you can see that the dots from the stencil, the dots from the stencil, they kind of create some rhythm. And you're actually gonna lose track of where it was that you did all of that original collaging. And you wanna make sure to use a variety of different shapes. So yes, you wanna use circles of different sizes, that's true. But you also wanna make sure that you use some of the triangles and diamonds and play around with different colors so that you're fooling the eye as to exactly what's happening. So I'm just gonna move around the tray, basically getting every area that I want and take your time with this. There's no stress. But the way that I finished it up, if you look at the finished piece, is pretty much I sanded the edges to give it a little bit more of a rustic look and I put a shiny clear coat down in the middle. And this really makes for a tray that you can serve drinks on. You could even just use it to decorate with. And it's also a technique that you could use to on a canvas or a wood panel or anything like that.